of the machines, as they're given to you, you're going to say these are different, even though they're the same. Right? Because you're given these states in some order, and if they don't happen to be given to you in the same order, you don't get lucky. This is called the graph isomorphism problem. Somebody gives you two graphs, and the question is, do they look the same? And they might be, you know, relabeled in a different way. So how do you check if they're the same? What do you have to do to check if these are really the same then? You got to relabel them with every possible relabeling and see if one of them actually comes up with identical arrows. How many relabelings are there in this graph with n states? n factorial. Right. So whoever gave this idea, great, it definitely works. All we care about is whether it's decidable or not, whether we can do it. But as far as efficiency goes, this method, it's bad. It's definitely exponential. So is there any better way to check if two finite state machines are equal that doesn't take exponential time? Heather, you got an idea? Yeah, I'm not sure if I remember it quite exactly, but something like you take the union mm. of the intersection of the first with the inverse of the second and <laughs> the intersection of the Second, the inverse of the first. Right. And end up with yeah. Isn't it a, an analogous problem to this one? And just see if they're if they're equivalent to one another by doing the same kind of thing, sending strings through, and seeing if they end up in the same states. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what you mean. You, you want to take each like, machine and run it through here and. S but then we'd still have to relabel the letters to see if some relabeling would match the x's up precisely. Right. Right? I'm, I'm thinking that I'm, all you really care about is that every string ends up in, in an accept state or doesn't. OK. Oh, I see. So use the same kind of, I'd have to think about it for more than the 30 seconds to, to kind of come up with an idea like that. Maybe is, is the answer. I don't know. Yeah, well, you can always, yeah. So I guess I'm not sure why, why would you need to try factorial relabeling? Why wouldn't you just start at the start state and then, you know? The start state is the only state that's uniquely identified. Right. But all the other states could be labeled different things. So the state labeled number two might not be the state that's labeled number two in the other machine. Right, but you, how you get to state number two is either by a zero or a one. I suppose that's true, right. So if you could start at that initial state, if you see a zero, you can just relabel it yourself. Right. I agree. So that's a good idea. Seth basically says that we don't really have to try all n factorial labelings. We can start from that initial state, which is identified, and use the deterministic aspect of it to relabel it ourselves in the only way that's possible. I'll go for that. I'm willing to go for that. Relabel them both with your own. Relabel them both with your own label and check for consistency. 100% good idea. Good way to fix it. Uh, but I know everybody was laughing when Heather was given her idea, except for the fact that she didn't mention you're supposed to do a handspring at the end. Uh, she's right. She has a very good idea, but, but it, it relates to a lot of other problems that you can solve in a similar way. Seth's idea is excellent, but let me go through an idea that's equivalent to what Heather was saying, but won't seem quite as, um, as complicated, I don't think. If two FSMs are equal, let's call them uh, A and B. Then if you calculate their difference, what should that equal? Nothing. Should equal nothing, right? If you take away all the strings in B from all the strings in A and they're equal, then you should get nothing. Now how do you calculate A minus B? I can make a finite state machine equal to A minus B. A minus B is the same as A, who knows how to do A minus B from set theory? Symmetric difference of a set. A intersect. A intersect not b. That's a minus b. So take a, take b and complement it. Intersect the two. This represents a minus b. Do this, do the complement, intersect the two, minimize it. If it looks like this, you're done. The answer is yes. If it doesn't look like it, the answer is no. What do you mean both ways? Well, you could also do 
I don't think so. I think if a minus b equals the empty set, then, then we're OK. I don't think you have to do both. I think about it, though. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but, but I think this is enough. But this idea of going back and using set things to create new finite state machines and then minimize them is a very commonly used tool in doing these kind of decision algorithms. And you can pretty much decide anything you want about two finite state machines using these kind of tools. Um, let's see. Let me do one more, and then we'll let this topic go. All right, how about this? How about uh, the language is infinite? Somebody gives you a regular set, and you want to know if the language is infinite. What do you do? Look in your finite state machine and see if there's a loop. Who's betting the farm on that? While we wait to see if we bet the farm, Chris can figure out exactly what it is that's subtly wrong with what he said. What's wrong with what you said? Why isn't it enough just to look for a loop? There's got to be a loop on a state that has some path that goes to a final state. There can be plenty of loops elsewhere that might not make it. So you look in your, you look in your finite state machine, and you look for cycles. And it doesn't have to be a loop. I mean, you meant a cycle. You look for any cycle, and if any node on that cycle has a path to a final state, then you say yes. So again, you're back in graph algorithm territory. There's a lot of stuff that relates to that. There's other ways of doing this. Why don't you just turn it into a regular expression and look for a star. That's pretty safe, right? I think it's easier to think of this with a regular expression than with a machine, even. For equality, could you? Mm -hmm. No, because they can come up different. What? Because you turn them both into regular expressions, mm. they were the same, but... No, but I'm so glad you asked that question. There's even more regular expressions to describe something like that. There is no minimum regular expression. And what's worse, the problem of determining whether two regular expressions are identical is NP complete in the size of, of the regular expression? It's a hard problem. The only way we know how to do it is to convert the regular expressions to NFAs, back to DFAs, and do it the way Seth said. So regular expressions are very hard to deal with. Almost every problem about regular expressions with respect to the size of the expression is NP complete. There's a whole list of problems about regular expressions that are NP complete. Um, yeah. There's no minimum just because when you do the conversion, you can take the nodes out in different orders. So you can end up, I mean, is that sort of, because I, I can have a minimum finite state machine. I can convert a finite state machine to a regular expression. But there's more than one way to do that. There's more than one way to do the, yeah, I see what you're asking. Yes, 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 Michael. Right. Depending on which state you rip out first and what order you rip them out, you will get different regular expressions. That might have the same length. That might have the same length. That might look different. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Right about both sides. You need to do both, huh? Like if you have, if B is larger than A? Yeah. If it encloses A, then you're going to get empty. Right. 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 So Heather's right. You need to do this to check A minus B equals empty and B minus A equals empty. Because A minus B can equal empty whenever A is smaller than B, whenever it's contained inside. You're 100% right. So you need to do both. And that means you've got to do two sets of machines and see if they're both equal to this. With an optional handspring. With an optional handspring in between, right. Now, this isn't so bad to do. Right? Complements is an easy thing to do. And intersection is not an exponential process. It's just a product, like Dimitri showed you last time. So these aren't so hard to do. You can do them efficiently. Uh, what else? That's where it's just a simple What yes, 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 yeah, because you know what to fix on, and you have a, and it's deterministic, so, and you know the, the edges are there, right. All right, how about this? How about, uh, is, is a regular set A contained in a regular set B? So you get, you get two regular sets. Does everything, is every string that A accepts also accepted by B?